Hey, what's up guys? Tony here, and you're watching some more iRacing. This is week four at Daytona. Uh, I qualified in the very back of the field, which sucked because I was running in the, the sort of mid to high 48s. Uh, but what happened was going into uh, turn one on my final green lap, uh, I spun out. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I qualified with like a minute 50 something and basically dead last and I was like awesome that's awesome because oh that's right because the first flying lap I, uh, I had like a smidge of an off track and I was like no <laughs> so I think it was like maybe it was like a minute 52 anyways it was good enough for dead last and so I knew I had a lot more in me um, I think if, if uh, I would have had a little bit more practice uh, and I think I would have gotten used to my pedals, um, then I might have been able to get to a low 48s to maybe like a 47. Who knows? Doubtful. But anyways, uh, it just means that I've got cars to go through. Um, it was a really good race. Uh, I won't share the whole race because as of any race, especially a longer track like this, once the field gets split up, I end up running into a situation where I'm in no man's land, uh, and I run into a lap car and who was way faster than me, I mean like way faster than me, uh, but for whatever reason he decided to just hang out behind me. Uh, and then, because we go into every single corner and he would just back off and just stay behind me. I don't know why, he must have just been bored. But uh, so he would stay behind me and then I think it was like turn two, I think. Um, for whatever reason, he decided to come up on the inside and then it spun me out and damn near wrecked my race. Um, but I was really pissed off at that guy. I, you know, I got on the radio and I told him, I was just, his name was like Alex, I think. I just like, you know, either pass me or go the fuck away. You know, because I, the last thing I want to do is I've been working on my safety rating for the last few weeks. I'm just trying to get my SR up because uh, week one and week two were, were pretty uh, nasty to it. <laughs> Um, with all the off tracks at Laguna Seca, and then I had a couple of bad races at Watkins Glen, and then actually week three was pretty bad because the only race I got into, I was, I was racing just for the sake of SR because it was at Mid Ohio, and uh, Mid Ohio is a track that I just bought. I bought the Friday, that uh, the Friday of that that week, and so I had um, maybe a couple hours worth of practice, and I was like, screw it, you know, my time suck. Uh, I think I was running like 125s and. Uh, the, the field was running like 122s, 123s, and so I was like, screw it, I'm, I'm just going to go and um, just get it, in, get, it, get it over with and get some SR and no big deal. Uh, but some freaking damaged car came up behind me and on the straight going into, I don't know, turns three and four, to sort of like right, left, uh, uphill sort of chicane. Um, he came on the straight and then for whatever reason oh he's damaged too so he came side by side with me on the straight and then he just like drifts over left and wrecks me i'm like what the fuck man uh it was, i was pretty pissed off i was yeah <laughs> there's pictures of it on twitter <laughs> um but anyways uh this race is, is a nice progression from where i have been because there's a two two things i want to talk about is just being overly cautious and and uh hardware issues so uh in week two at Watkins Glen I had noticed that because I wrecked out the first race because I went to the bus stop and I was coming out of the bus stop and and I, you know I don't know about you but sometimes during practice I like to come through different lines you know in the event that I have to run it during a race like I, I won't get myself all screwed up because I'm running a different line or coming out of a corner differently so I can't I, I, I would come out of the bus stop different angles I never had any issue and then whatever, for whatever reason during the race, I was having a pretty good race and I came out of the bus stop and the car just like hit, I don't know, like a divot or some shit and um, it did something that's never done in practice and it just like took off to the left and smashed my ass right into the wall. And I was so pissed. I was like, what the fuck? I was mad. Um, so anyways, it was like, I, I, <laughs> it was funny because it was an actual race before work. Uh, I could sneak in usually. I could sneak in a race before work, and this one I could not. Or I mean, this one, this one I did, and so I was. I don't know. I don't know how many laps. I was only a handful of laps into the race, and I was just set the tone for the rest of the day. <laughs> I mean, I got over it, but still, I was just like, damn it! I wanted to get a good race in, and I was 
concerned about my safety rating and, and making sure I don't lose my B-class <laughs> license again. Um, but that being said, uh, after that, I, I noticed that with um, Tega and then Watkins Glen, my pace is always slower. It is always slower in a, in a race, typically always slower in a race than in practice because, you know, your SR, SR is online. And um, but I was just being really overly cautious. And it was actually middle of a race. Um, I was looking at my lap times. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I'm a second and then some off of my normal pace. Like, why am I pussyfooting on, around this track? I, I you know. And uh, so I think that mental realization uh, helped me out because uh, I kind of put myself in that mindset. And I, I couldn't get through that in the race. But... Uh, I'm finding that I'm a little bit more aggressive. Obviously, going in, if you notice, going into uh, turn one uh, from the get-go, I was pretty cautious, like overly cautious. But, you know, I don't want to wreck in lap one, turn one of lap one, like nobody does. Some people do, I guess, because they, they sure as hell like to. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I feel like I'm starting to get over that hump of, of being overly cautious during a race. Like, there are certain things that I still find to be inexcusable, like rear-ending people. Uh, so I, I will do my best to give room, uh, and I will do my best to not be on someone's ass going into a breaking zone, because I'm, we're not professional racers. I'm rusty as shit. Um, I've had too many situations in my own iRacing career where someone rear-ends me because uh, they just don't know how to follow someone into a corner. So I think eventually I'll get there, uh, but at the moment I I'm just not comfortable enough like going into a corner and, um, and sitting on someone's ass through the corner. You know, it's still the detriment of my own race, but you know it keeps me on track and it keeps me from rearing somebody and uh, damaging my car and their car in the process. The other issue that I was having, and this really showed itself in the R-Factor video, it really showed itself in the um, race at Mid-Ohio, is that my pedals. I had an issue with my pedals. The, uh, the driver, and there's a firmware update and a driver update, and so long story short, it took me um, the better part of that week to figure it out. because. I, like I said, I first noticed it in the R Factor video, and then I raced in Project Cars, and then in Corsa. I'm like, why is it in every other game right now if the AI is just walking me, like, all the time? It's stupid, like, on the straights. I'm like, I can't, I don't know why they're walking me, and it's dumb, and I don't like it. <laughs> That's me pounding, I'm like, Arr. But, um, so I, I figured out that I had an issue. Uh, what I, what also was an issue is that my brake pedal was, a, was applying a little bit of brake pressure all the time. And so that was like uh, sort of a, a head slapper, like, oh my gosh, I figured out the issue. Because at in Ohio, I was a good like three seconds off pace. Even at Watkins Glen, like I, I probably could have done better if I would have realized this problem sooner. Because there, there were times where I was in the draft of a car, and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> and and though, actually at this track, uh, at Daytona, there was a race I had before this one. And I had a damaged car drafting me and coming side by coming up to me side by side uh, on the straight and I'm like what are you what's going on like this shouldn't happen and I'd be in a, in a draft of a car and I wouldn't eat I would be losing them I'd watch uh, you know my my I'd be dropping back a tenth at a time and I'm like what's going on so that's when I really went in hard and and tried to figure out what's going on and uh, so thankfully I figured it out Last week, uh, like I said, it was a firmware update, a driver update, and so once I got those updates done, the pedals are way, way different. Now that's the problem though, is they're way different. Like before, there was really no progression in the pedal. So if I pushed the pedal down a quarter of the way, I'd get about 10% brake pressure in game. If I did about halfway, I'd get about quarter, you know, 25% brake pressure. And then that, that 50% from the, from 50% to the to the floor, like that was a, a rapid progression. It'd be like, whoop, just go right up to full throttle. And so what would happen is that as I would start to, to lock my brakes up like all the time, because that's the only way I could get dependable brake pressure is by basically flooring the pedal. Now, so now everything's different. Um, it's the other way around. You know, now I, I pretty much get to full brake pressure by barely touching the pedal. So I'm gonna have to play with the, the tension on the brake pedal and uh, tighten it down a little bit more because right now it's a little too loose for me. Although, I don't know, I think if I get used to it, it'll be great because it'll, it'll allow me to have a little bit more um, 
progression, but I'm only like a week into this new setup. And so I'm hoping that uh, going forward, it helps out. So I, I think I, like I said, I know that I'd benefit from it. So it's just now, like I said, a matter of getting used to the pedal. So uh, let me know in the comment section if you guys have had any issues with any of your Fanatec pedals because this is the first time that I've ever had an issue with the Fanatec product. I had the Fanatec V2s beforehand, absolutely love those. When they upgraded to the V3s, I was like, yes, I need that. And I went and I got it, and uh, this has been kind of the first issue, you know, albeit a software issue. So, still love it. Still would love to get a, a Fanatec wheel, um, but I mean, that's a long time coming. <laughs> hmm. I actually don't really have much else to say. Uh, this race is not going to be a full race, just because, like I mentioned earlier, uh, once we get the field gets spread out, it, it's not really, there's really not much going on. So, um, after that guy kind of spins me out, uh, and I end it there. So, as always, guys, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I shall talk to you guys later.